I have a lot to say, and it's cold as hell. <laughs> Ooh, I can tell some jokes about coldness and being black, but I won't. Now, you're supposed to laugh, right? All right, get ready to participate with me. <clears throat> you got that? You got your part? Are you ready? Are you ready? Somewhere over the rainbow, blue way up high, and the dreams that we dream of once in a lullaby. Now let me tell you, by a show of hands, did that get your attention? Woo, thank you, because that was my intent. I looked up the purpose of commencement address on the world famous reference, you know, the one that starts with a W, and the commencement speaker should inspire, amuse, and instruct the members of a graduating class, certainly not bore them. So my hope is to do just that inspire, amuse, and instruct you through the training to my training in American studies. I am resorting back to what I know, <clears throat> the cultural, spiritual, and economic symbolism in Frank Baum's 1900 classic American children's book, guess what, The Wizard of Oz. Baum was a political activist in his time in 1890. He wrote 16 books about the make-believe world of Oz. Embodied in his stories were the pros and cons of the need to maybe create a third American political party and some critiques of a U.S. populism. I appreciate Baum's ability to tap into those universal themes called hope, personal journeys, human and societal transformation, and of course, the power within. And if this is not your culture story, I apologize in advance. All cultures have stories with universal themes, and I respect the diversity in those stories. Now, in 1987, when I had only been here a year at Grinnell, my first baccalaureate remarks unpacked The Wizard of Oz, and I focused on the challenges of those five main characters. One, come on, put your finger up, one scared girl, three male misfits, one good witch, and most of you know the rest. My emphasis to the graduates is what sociologists call personal agency. And I remember, and I reminded them, that Glinda, the good witch, told Dorothy at the end of the story, and she said it in that cute little voice, dear one, you have to believe in yourself. So I posed to the graduates a question, what is the personal power through education, and what will you do with it? In 1987, the world was just two years from the collapse of the Soviet Union and one year before the Iraq War, when the U.S. population was only 224 million and gas was only 90 cents. ATZ was launched as a treatment for HIV AIDS. Michael Jackson sang, bad! And Ronald Reagan was the president. What a different world, right? What a different America. In my second baccalaureate remarks 10 years later in 2017, I focused on the political and economic institutions inside of Oz. In other words, why did Dorothy, what did Dorothy get herself into accidentally by killing the oppressor? You remember, she landed on the wicked witch of the East. I call it death by house, right? because that wicked witch of the East enslaved the little people. And how did her role in their liberation unintentionally change her personal journey? I pose to the graduates another question. What challenges 
to your future will come as a direct result of this new world order, global world capitalism? And how will your education prepare you to meet them? In 2007, guess what? George W. Bush was the president. The war in Afghanistan and religious fanaticism was blowing up that part of the world. Regime change became a popular form of political change. China joined the G8 summit, and guess what? The iPhone that you all use was named Gadget of the Year. Gas was 38 cent a gallon, and one year later, in 2008, there was a worldwide economic crisis caused by deregulation in the financial industry, and guess what? Come on, say what? what? I didn't hear you. What? Nancy Pelosi was elected the first woman Speaker of the House. Applaud. Absolutely. What a different world. What a different America. In 2012, in my faculty remarks, I continued unpacking the Oz playbook. I focused on the powerful theme of home through, through the relationships and power dynamics and in the text between the wizard on the one hand and Glinda on the other. And in the real world between leaders and communities. Remember, Dorothy's discovered after that journal journey and growth on the yellow brick, brick road that the wizard was a fake. By the way, since you may not know this, but Baum's storyline was so disappointing to many parents that many libraries banned his book up to 1957. So I pose this time two questions to the graduates. What do you do when your education, with your education, when systems fail, when systems disappoint, when systems resist you? And how prepared are you to return home and stay loyal to the principles and ideals of your Grinnell education in the real, real world? You can clap. I love that. That would be great. Thank you. In 2012, the Eurozone was in crisis. Bin Laden was dead. The price of gas was $3.64. While Wall Street was being occupied by disappointed youth like you, the Arab Spring was contagious. The words like bullying and greenhouse gas emissions both became popular words in our families. Anti-austerity demonstrations grew all over the world while wearing a hoodie made you a mark for a bullet. And all this happened while Barack Obama was the president of the United States. What a different world. What a different America. And here we are, nine years later, 2021, all of us survivors of a worldwide health pandemic and, nation, and national racial reckoning. And locally, I'd add, survivors of a derecho which devastated our campus and Grinnell community. In all three of these crises, where we were shocked, in pain, in despair, we also stood in community. We came together in new ways, in Grinnell, in America, and around the world. Let's not forget some of us were experiencing a woke-up culture. And for others, this crisis only magnified that deep feeling of been there, done that, and we know it. And yet, either side of this contradiction, this moment for all of us, we all have to cross over. We have to cross under. We have to go around. We have to get through some very challenging and complex questions, bold questions. We have to face our denials. We have to drop the excuses. We have to create different practices. We have to reject 
old ideas. We have to revamp our traditions about our shared American culture. And why do we have to do that? Because the yellow brick road may not be the road to get us where we need to go. That's what Dorothy used to get home. But America will have to now build something very different. Here's my idea. I am looking for the anti-racism highway, the one that goes along Highway 80. And to be on that highway, we have to work like the munchkins of, the, of Oz, under oppression or in liberation. Yep, we have to change ourselves to change the world. And I can tell you, being a munchkin activist all my life, that changing Keisho has been formidable. Don't you imagine that it will be that way for you? My mentors, Jace, James and Grace Lee Boggs, taught me that in the struggle to be more human and create a more humane society, this is what will make us human. And I link Boggs' I lesson to the Chinese word for crisis. It means literally the recognition of a crucial point to change things that are happening. And the second part is to endeavor. What does it mean to endeavor? It means to do something hard even when it is hard to do. So in 2021, I posed to you, the graduates, how will you be munchkins? How will you endeavor? And how will you use your education in that act? You see, your work ahead is to heal first your heart, open your minds, decolonize your own structures and spaces, free your own imagination. And that is powerful. That is what your education, an aspect of it, has been about. And I believe that will carry you over this rainbow that will show up in your life. This is going to happen whether you like it or not, because you're going to be munchkins, you're going to be workers, you're going to be the creators of the next future. Many Grinnell alums who came before you already have lit the highway for you new munchkins to tread. Let me name a few of my favorites whose stories they've told me over the years have inspired me. Robert Austin, George Moose, Irma McLaren, Sandy Stein, Stephanie Snow. Clap if you know some of these people. Stephen Beck, Aaron Wagner, Chris Newberg, Kim and, and David Simmons, Derek Daniels, Lisa Alexandra, Shannon Carr, Kendall Holly, Angela and Jake Amawachi Willage, Fenton Mason, Juma Bello, Lester Allman, Elena Benell, Vincent Kais, Marion Saxena Hatch, Jillian Kong, Emma Kangaroo Johnson, Kate DeMott Grady, David Akpan Waldi, Sam Sue, Carrie Stallings, Tamara Burnett, David Williams, Daniel Kisslinger, and other favorites, Munchkins, who came back to Grinnell to serve this college. One of my heroes, President George Drake. Andy Hamilton, Rachel Bly, Nino Parker, Eric Sanning, Alfredo Rivera, Sarah Purcell, Rachel Carbich, Daniel Cutchins, Doug Cutchins, sorry, Jane Cheney, Molly Camp, and so many others. So let me apologize in advance for my short list. It's all about the time. I've taught over 5,200 students in my 43 years at three different institutions, and I've taught more than thousands in workshops and training. And I have distilled my lessons from what they've told me into an acronym, which will be your last lesson. Are you ready? Yeah. All righty, I knew you would be. That acronym is READ, say that, READ. R stands for teachable. Ah, R stands for? E 
stands for excellence. A stands for accountability. D stands for center, diversity in all you do. Okay, are you ready for the test? All right, here we go. R. E. A. D. Good job. Give yourself an applause. And now I come to the best part of the Wizard of Oz, the symbolism and importance of the red ruby snippers. <laughs> I'm laughing because you're supposed to laugh and I'm laughing too. I want to say to you that I think all of you need a pair of these slippers. The fact is, when they made the movie, they made five pairs for Dorothy, and only one of them survived in the Smithsonian. It is reported that these red ruby slippers are the most requested cultural artifact to be seen by millions all over the world. Now, why is that? Why would you go to the Smithsonian to see red ruby slippers? Well, let me tell you. It's because of what they can do. What could they do? They gave power to whom is wearing them to travel anywhere they wish to go. And what is the significance about that power to travel? Traveling begins in the mind, and it is carried by the body, and both create the ability for you to triumph over powerful forces, real or imagined. So I am saying to you, own your education. Own it. And in many ways, in that ownership, it's like a pair of red ruby slippers. And like the good witch, Glinda, I am empowering you with those shoes as you leave the wonderful land of Oz we call Grinnell College. I want you to discover what you can do in this life. Make a fortune, adopt a child, be a, a, uh, be a master gardener. I want you to direct your inner power, paint a portrait, create a social movement, invent a cure. To learn to travel the human relationship highways, I want that for you using the most magical words that there are, to be able to say no without guilt and yes with confidence, and pause when you're not quite ready, and finally, to learn when it is time to veer from the script, because every once in a while, you have to veer from the script. You know the scripts, the ones that keep you a bit too serious, Forgetting that crap happens and needing to do something that your soul longs for, regardless if you can get people to understand it or not. Follow those inner feelings. Veer from the script sometimes. Because I want you to know that veering from the script is about what you can do with the privilege of education. Please use it. Do it next time. Do it the right way. So graduates, take the red ruby slippers and fly. I congratulate you. We all congratulate you. We believe in you. You look good in red. And I want you to know that you will be munchkins and step forward in a time when our world needs you to be that munchkin. And remember this. Some... Where over the rainbow blue birds fly, and they'll be wearing red ruby slippers. Thank you.